Just a few seasons ago, Kelly Bryan had 3,500 yards and 24 touchdowns while leading the number one Clemson Tigers to the college football playoff. Eight months later, he lost his starting job and his time at Clemson was over. Fast forward a year and a half and he went undrafted in the 2020 NFL Draft and his football career is now potentially over. So in just a year and a half, how did Kelly Bryan go from fulfilling a lifelong dream to potentially being done with football. Before we talk about the career of Kelly Bryant, make sure to click that subscribe button if you're brand new to the channel. If you love college football, this is definitely the place for you. And make sure you turn on those notifications so you never miss an upload in the future. Now, Kelly Bryant had to sit behind Deshaun Watson and essentially be the backup for a few years before getting the starting job. Now, knowing they're not going to be the starter for a while, a lot of quarterbacks, they would just transfer and take the easy road out where they potentially can start somewhere else. But Kelly Bryant decided to stay. That took a lot of tough something he picked up during his junior year of high school. As a junior at Wren High School in South Carolina, Bryant put up video game-like numbers. He threw for 2,700 yards while completing 63% of his passes. He threw 29 touchdowns compared to only 8 interceptions. Now, his real damage came on the ground where he rushed for 1,200 yards and 18 touchdowns. So, in total, as a junior, Bryant accounted for nearly 4,000 yards and 47 total touchdowns. Now, not only did Bryant excel in the football field, he also excelled on the basketball court as well. In addition to being the star quarterback, Bryant also was on the varsity basketball team. But in February of 2014, something very scary happened during one of his games. Bryant didn't play at all in the first half, so his head football coach, Jeff Tate, decided to go and check on him at halftime. When he walked in, he saw Bryant there, vomiting blood. Now leading up to the game, Bryant was really sick, but his parents just thought it was the normal bug that was going around school. Kelly Bryant's parents took him to the Children's Hospital of Georgia in Augusta and soon learned that his condition was much more serious than they originally thought. Doctors conducted an MRI of his abdomen and found a softball-sized abscess, which was blocking his lower intestine. Brian had emergency surgery to remove the blockage, which might have infected his entire body if the pocket had burst. Had it not been caught in time, it could have been fatal. Now, a few years prior to the incident, Brian was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. Now, after being diagnosed with it, Brian had to put strict restrictions on his diet and had to take medication for his conditions. Now, though he had to change what he ate, he would still suffer occasional symptoms. Crohn's disease can cause intestinal swelling, which can lead to a blockage such as Brian's, but his family had no idea how severe his condition had become. Now, though the surgery was a success, it wouldn't be a quick recovery for Brian. He had to spend nearly a month in the hospital while recovering. He was bedridden and he couldn't eat solid foods of any kind. Now, because of this, Brian lost more than 50 pounds. 50 pounds. He was just over 200 pounds before this whole thing happened and he was down to the 150s. He was so weak after losing all the weight and being bedridden, he had to use a walker just to get from place to place for a while. A once healthy and dominant starting quarterback was now severely underweight and needed a walker just to go a few feet. And all of a sudden, Kelly Bryant's football career was in doubt. When he was finally able to go home a month later, he left the hospital with a colostomy bag. Now, according to the ESPN article, the surgeons removed the blockage from his lower intestine. They also performed a colostomy, in which they diverted his large intestine to a stoma, a visible opening of his abdomen. A colostomy bag was placed over the stoma to collect waste that Brian normally would have passed while using the restroom. The colostomy bag allowed the inflamed and irritated portion of his lower intestine to heal. Bryant wrapped the colostomy bag with bandages so that it wasn't as noticeable when he left home, and he wore it to school and under a tuxedo at his prom that spring. Now, although he was going through this, he still convinced his parents to let him participate in football in the spring while wearing the bag underneath. Now, his coaches kept him at eye contact drills, but he was still able to throw and participate in very minimal activities. Now, Brian's football career wouldn't be coming to an end anytime soon, as he committed to play football at Clemson just a month after he was released from the hospital. He had offers from Florida, Virginia Tech, South Carolina, NC State, and a few others, but ultimately, Kelly decided he wanted to stay in-state and play for Clemson. We kept up with what was going on with him and knew that he'd lost a lot of weight, Clemson coach Dabo Sweeney said. We hadn't even officially offered him yet when all all that was going on. There was definitely some concern, but everyone thought that they were going to get it under control. When the school year ended in June of 2014, Brian had a second surgery to reverse the colostomy. He had two visible scars from the stoma. Brian spent the summer before his senior season at Wren High catching up on his academics, regaining the weight he'd lost, and working to improve as a passer. Here's what his coach had to say. He put in so much extra work that summer. He was determined and motivated to prove that he could throw the football. By his senior year, he proved that he could make any throw he'd be asked to make. As a senior, Bryant was named a finalist for the Mr. Football Award in South Carolina. He was also named All-State after throwing for 3,600 yards with 41 touchdowns and rushing for 700 yards with 14 more touchdowns. So after everything Kelly Bryant went through over the course of a year, he put up even better numbers his senior year than he did his junior year. 
Like, hats off to you, Kelly. Brian enrolled at Clemson for 2015, but there was another quarterback that sat ahead of him on the depth chart, Deshaun Watson. Now, Brian knew that there was no way he'd beat out Watson to become the starter, so instead of switching schools, he put in his time, wait, and hopefully get his chance to start at Clemson. Now, he saw very minimal time during his first two seasons. He appeared in 11 games, but it was mostly garbage time, thanks to Clemson blowing out their opponents. During his time on the field, he completed 13 of 18 passes for 75 yards and a touchdown. He also added 200 yards and three touchdowns on the ground. On January 9th, 2017, Deshaun Watson led the Clemson Tigers to a national championship. His time was done, and he entered the NFL Draft. For Kelly Bryant, the long wait was over, and it was officially time for him to become Clemson's starting quarterback. He had to battle redshirt freshman Zarek Cooper and true freshman Hunter Johnson, but he was ultimately named the starter right before the season began. He's earned it. He's going to be our starter. We're excited about that, and I'm really proud of Kelly, Dabo Sweeney said. This has been a great competition, and I'm really proud of all the guys because they're just good people. They all want to be the guy, but I love to see them happy for somebody else. It's been a really good spirited competition, but this part of the competition is over and Kelly won it. Kelly Bryant was the starter, but he had a really tough act to follow. He had to replace the greatest quarterback in Clemson history, who was a Heisman finalist and just won a national championship for the school. But he was up to the task. In his first career start, he completed 73% of his passes for 236 yards and a touchdown. He also added 77 yards and a touchdown on the ground. He was named the offensive player of the game for the Tigers. The following week, he totaled 250 yards and two touchdowns as the Tigers took down the number 13 ranked Auburn Tigers at home. He followed that up by taking down number 14 Louisville on the road, where he completed 70% of his passes for over 300 yards and a touchdown while rushing for two touchdowns on the ground. He set Clemson records, setting the record for most wins by a first year starting quarterback at 12 and having the most top 25 wins as a quarterback with six. He finished top 10 in single season records such as completion percentage, completions, total offense, total offense per game, and passing yards per game. After a win against Boston College, Brian took down number 12 Virginia Tech on the road. He totaled nearly 300 yards and had a touchdown. On October 13th, the Tigers fell on the road by three to Syracuse, but Kelly Bryant bounced back and got his team back on track. They'd win their next five games, including wins at number 20 NC State, Florida State, and rival South Carolina. Over those five games, Brian completed 65% of his passes for over 1,000 yards with eight touchdowns. He also added 250 yards and three touchdowns on the ground. The Tigers met number seven Miami in the ACC title game and simply dominated them. They defeated the Hurricanes 38 to three, punching their ticket to the college football playoff. Kelly Bryant was 23 for 29 with 250 passing yards and a touchdown and was named the ACC championship game MVP. During the game, he tied a school record with 15 straight completions. Yet again, Clemson would meet Alabama, this time in the semifinal of the playoff. A year after Deshaun Watson led his team to the national title, Title game, Kelly Bryant led his team to the playoff and had Clemson as the number one ranked team in the country. Not bad in your first year as a starter. Now, he was unable to follow in Watson's footsteps as Clemson fell to Alabama 24-6. Bryant had a forgettable game as he completed 50% of his passes for only 124 yards while throwing two interceptions. Now, Kelly Bryant, he turned the page quickly and shifted his focus to the 2018 season and getting his Tigers back to the national championship. Although he led the Tigers to a playoff spot, he now found himself in a quarterback competition with Trevor Lawrence, one of the best quarterback recruits in the country. In August, Kelly Bryant was named the starter, but Head coach Dabo Sweeney said that nothing was set in stone for the season. The one thing I can probably definitely say is regardless of how it plays out, I don't see a situation early where we just play one guy. I mean, we've got some guys that are going to deserve to play. This is a situation that if somebody separates, it's probably going to take place in the games because you're talking about incredible competitors that are up to the task. Kelly Bryant got the season started with a victory, totaling nearly 200 yards with two touchdowns against Furman. The following week, Bryant led Clemson to a two-point victory on the road at Texas A&M. He completed 70% of his passes for 200 yards and a touchdown while rushing for 50 yards and a touchdown. Brian got the start the next two weeks against Georgia Southern and Georgia Tech, both being victories. He completed 13 of 20 passes for 125 yards, but freshman Trevor Lawrence was receiving a lot of playing time as well, including an impressive performance against Georgia Tech in which he completed 13 of 18 passes for 176 yards and four touchdowns. Two days after the game, Dabo Sweeney announced that the Tigers are going to be moving forward with Trevor Lawrence as the starting quarterback. Now, according to Sweeney, the starting role will be based on a week-to-week -week basis, meaning that Kelly Bryant still had a chance to win his job back. But for now, 
he lost his job. The number three Tigers wanted Trevor Lawrence to be their guy. Through four games, Bryant had led the offense on 21 full drives, while Lawrence had led 23. Clemson averaged 4.2 points a drive with Lawrence at the helm, nearly double what Bryant's scoring rate was. Now, shortly after that decision was made, Kelly Bryant shocked the college football world, announcing he planned to transfer. And just like that, his time with Clemson had come to an end. They asked me how I felt about it. I was like, I'm not discrediting Trevor, he's doing everything asked of him, but on my side of it, I feel like I haven't done anything to not be the starter. I've been here, I've waited my turn, I've done everything y'all have asked me to do, plus more. I've never been a distraction, I've never been in trouble with anything. To me, it was kind of a slap in the face. And here's what Dabo Sweeney had to say about the quarterback change. He won the job, and he was the starter for us last year and did a great job, and he came out of camp slightly ahead, and so he continued to start these first four games. But I definitely feel he's been given a fair shot. But at the end of the day, this is not middle school. There's tough decisions that have to be made at this level, and you gotta do what's best for the team. Kelly Bryant felt that he wasn't given a fair shot, and Sweeney was saddened and disappointed by the decision. As far as the decision, as a coach sometimes, you have to make tough decisions that are in the best interest of the team, and this is one of those decisions and I would make it all over again because I believe that's what's right for our team. I feel like Kelly would have continued to help us win and play a lot, but it's not what he wanted to do. I certainly could have started him this week, which would have limited his options, but that's not how we operate here. That's not who we are. You just have to respect his decision. This is what he feels is best for him, even though you don't agree with it. I did tell him if he wanted to go somewhere else and play next year, I would agree to not play him the rest of the year, but continue to stay and be a part of it if that's what he wanted to do. But it's not what he wanted to do. He made a decision he felt was best for him, and you have to respect that and move on. He didn't do anything wrong. He played well, but Trevor, after four games, productivity, and just the sheer data, he deserves to run out there first this game. The season went by, and Kelly Bryant hadn't announced where he was going to play yet. Clemson finished the season undefeated, and yet again, they won the ACC. Then, on December 4th of 2018, Kelly Bryant tweeted out where he'd be transferring. He announced he'd be transferring to Missouri, where he'd be eligible to play immediately and have one final year left of eligibility. He had interest in Auburn, Arkansas, Mississippi State, and North Carolina, but ultimately decided that he wanted to play at Missouri. It was a good situation for him, as Drew Locke would be entering the NFL, leaving a starting spot up for grabs. His former team, Clemson, just won a national championship without him, but he was ready to get to work. At the end of January, just one month after Kelly committed, Missouri was handed a one-year postseason ban. Bryant spent the coming months learning the new playbook and how the offense would be run. It feels so good to have the people around you know you're the guy, Bryant said. But at the same time, I'm not going to get too comfortable. I'm still going to have that mindset that if I'm not the guy, I'm just staying humble. I'm not listening to all the hype. It's good to hear, but I know in the back of my head what I'm here to do. I'm here to lead a team and to get better. The 2019 season was approaching and Bryant was ready for the year to begin. However, before the season began, there was some controversy and drama surrounding Bryant and his former team. Clemson got their championship rings, but... Kelly Bryant didn't get one, although he was with the team in 2018. He wasn't on the team. You've got to be on the team to get a ring, Dabo Sweeney said. I love Kelly and appreciate what he did for us, but he decided to move on. Sweeney said that he had not spoken with Bryant since he left Clemson, but looks forward to doing so when the time is right. Bryant told ESPN last month that he still keeps in touch with several of his Clemson teammates. Here's what Bryant had to say about the issue. A ring is a ring. I'm in Missouri, and I don't play any mind to that. Everybody else can make a story about it, which it's not really a story. Kelly Bryant had an impressive first game with the Tigers. He threw for over 400 yards and two touchdowns, but his team lost by six on the road at Wyoming. Missouri was already 0-1 on the season after a game in which they were favored by 20 points. Now, Kelly Bryant used this as motivation as him and the Tigers bounced back with a vengeance. They won their next five games, including victories over West Virginia, South Carolina, and Ole Miss. Over that stretch, Bryant was excellent. He threw for nearly 1,200 yards and had 10 passing touchdowns. He also rushed for 100 yards and one rushing touchdown. But sadly, Ole Miss would be the final win of his collegiate career. He lost the final four games he played in. He missed two games with injuries, but after starting the season 5-1, the Tigers finished the season 6-6. Six and six. Over his final four games, Bryant threw only 640 yards with three touchdowns and two interceptions. He finished the 2019 campaign with 2,200 yards and 15 touchdowns, completing 62% of his passes. He also added 250 yards and one touchdown on the ground. After such a promising start to the season for both Bryant and Missouri, the season quickly turned into a disaster. Though it didn't end the way he had hoped, Bryant still had the opportunity to impress scouts at the NFL Combine. He ran a 4.6940 yard dash and had a 35 inch vertical. He was measured at 6'3 and 225 pounds. 
Here's what pro football network draft analyst Tom Pauline had to say about Bryant's NFL potential. He's got a good amount of upside, but he's someone that's going to need a bit of work before he's NFL ready. Now, whether that bit of work means he's selected in the 6th or 7th round and sits on the bench for a year or ends up on the practice squad, that's still to be determined, but he's going to get a shot. Well, the NFL draft came and went, and Bryant's name wasn't called. There were 337 players that were invited to the scouting combine, and Bryant is one of a few guys that haven't even signed an undrafted free agent contract yet. Former Clemson quarterback Taj Boyd tweeted out saying it's largely due to the complications of the coronavirus and not being able to perform at Pro Day. Here's what he tweeted out last month. Kelly Bryant and DeAndre Francois and a good bit of these players who haven't signed yet are subjected to the implications of the coronavirus. Not being able to perform at Pro Day, not being able to go through the interview process, and not being able to go to the rookie mini camp all hurt. Without being able to perform at rookie mini, guys that would have had opportunities to compete may never get that shot. It's likely teams and coaches are hesitant of bringing someone in they don't know or haven't seen. With everything being virtual, tough to shine with no reps. Still can't tell me these guys aren't good enough to play somewhere or better than what's on a lot of these rosters, but the league is different. Teams stick with what they know or who they know. Young guys just have to stay ready and wait for the call to come. Grind for it. Kelly Bryant spoke with Jim Rome in February about always having to battle and fight when the odds were against him. I'm a fighter, he said. It's been the story of my life. I've had to deal with a lot of things, adverse situations. Whenever I have a tough time, I just revert back to being in that hospital bed, looking at my grandmother's every day while my parents were at work. It gives me extra fuel to fight. That's just been my testament, my story each and every day when I get out of bed. Kelly Bryant tweeted this photo on April 27th. The photo says, this will all make perfect sense someday. Now, hopefully for Kelly Bryant, this all does make sense someday. Now, whether or not he ever gets a shot in the NFL, there are going to be other opportunities for him out there. Now, he's been throwing difficult obstacles his entire life, and no matter the circumstance, he's always overcome them.